On today's video, we are talking the Connecticut Housing and Market Report, along with a special edition of some good news, Connecticut. Stick around. Hey, what's up everyone? Aaron Bowman here, and thanks for coming by and checking out another video. Now, on today's video, we are talking the market report for the month of April. And uh, we've got some pretty good numbers for you. I think you're gonna be very surprised. And we also are gonna have a special addition to this video, and that's gonna be Some Good News Connecticut. Now, there might be some copyright infringement in this video. Sorry, John Krasinski, but your ideas seem pretty good, and I think everybody, even here in Connecticut, could use some good news. So, let's get into the market report. So, the median sale price of homes here in Connecticut last month was 233, and that's actually up to 251 here in the month of April. So, that's some good news. Now let's talk average days on market. Now your average days on market has actually dropped significantly. Days on market last month were 68 days and it's currently about 55 days. So there has been some pickup in home sales, which is good for everybody who is looking to sell their home right now. Now sales, we went from 2,474 transactions to 3,149 transactions in March which is also positive numbers here. Everything that we're looking at is moving to a faster sale and for more money, which is great news as a homeowner because now you can pull some of that equity out of your home. Now, supply hasn't changed that much. You think it would have changed more houses coming on the market, but I think because of this pandemic, some people are holding off. We went from 4.2 months to 4.1 months. So there's really not that huge difference of a change. There's still about four months supply of inventory on the market. Now that is for Connecticut. Now we're still in a housing shortage for all the entry level homes. That's still here in Connecticut and across the US market. And if you follow our Instagram account, I have some slides and some photos that I'm gonna be showing you there. Uh, that kind of goes more into the national view as far as the housing market this possible recession isn't like 2008, which it's really not. As you can see by the numbers, we're still steadily moving up, which is a good thing. So now let's get on to some good news, Connecticut. All right, so let's talk some good news, Connecticut edition. Now, again, John, I am sorry that I'm totally stealing your intellectual property here. And I hope I do it justice. I just think it's such a great idea and more people should be putting this stuff out on their YouTube channel to really get that vibe going in this time of need across the US and the world. So let's talk some good news Connecticut here for the renters in Connecticut. So Governor Lamont released an executive order number 7X a few days ago. And basically in this order has a lot to do with renters and landlords and it really benefits the renters during this time of need. So if you want to see the full thing, I'll put a link of it to it in the description below or at least the key points of it. But basically it has this to say that it prohibits anyone being evicted on proceedings before 1 July 2020. So if you have fallen behind in your rent, currently right now the landlord cannot evict you until July. Now, that doesn't mean you need to take advantage of this. If you have the money, you should still be paying your landlord. It's just the right thing to do. Now, rent due in April, the landlords must give a 60-day grace period for payment, which right now, or before this executive order, was only nine days. So by the 10th year in Connecticut, your rent was late. So if the tenant has paid more than one month's rent, they can use the excess of that rent to be applied towards April, May, and June rent. So there's some things if you are currently renting that this order really does protect you, which is good because nobody wants to lose their home. And I know there's some things out there for people that actually own their home as far as deferring mortgage payments and stuff like that, but you need to call your individual institution lender to find out what programs they have available for you. Now, Let's get into some heartwarming good news here in Connecticut. All right, so some good news here. There's a couple of distilleries here in Connecticut that are now currently making hand sanitizer. So if you can't find it at your local CVS, Walmart, or drugstore, maybe you want to stop by, pick up a fifth for yourself, and then some hand sanitizer while you're at these distilleries. So Full Moonshine in Canton has hand sanitizer. So no, 1420 in Norwalk, I hope I got that right. 
and then the Fifth State Distillery in Bridgeport. And check this out, they have a gin hand sanitizer, which that's kind of cool because I like gin and tonics, so maybe I'll go get some. Now, let's get into some other things here around Connecticut where people are coming together and helping out other individuals. For example, there is a Kristen Skelton who has an Etsy shop called Milo and Molly, and I'll put her link down below in the description, and she's currently making face masks for people all across the country. Now, I actually saw this on the local news and I thought I'd put it on here because I think that's really cool that somebody has a skill like that where they can now take some time away from their Etsy business or their work at home business and create these masks for people that need them, which is huge. So, thank you, I appreciate that. Now, Lindsay Begue from Bristol has collected artwork, cards, and plants, and she's bringing all of that to show people who are COVID-19 positive at an alternative care site in Meriden. So thanks, Lindsay, for being able to bring your artwork to these people to put a smile on their face in what could be one of the most troubling times for them, especially with this pandemic. A family welcomes home a 99-year-old COVID-19 patient survivor, which is huge because we know that this really affects everybody, but it really goes after the older demographics. Now, Betty Draper used her walker on Wednesday to get from her carport in Springfield, Illinois, into her home. So congratulations, Betty. Glad to hear that you're doing better and really kicking the crap out of COVID-19. Now in Minneapolis, Minnesota, a local photographer named David Puente is going around and capturing all these moments together of families during this social distancing and taking their photos on their front porch, which is really cool because now it's gonna give you some positive memories coming out of this pandemic. And I gotta say, with a family of seven, we're not always together all the time, so it makes it really nice that there is somebody out there doing this. So now here's a little call out to all my photographer friends here in Connecticut. I would love to see somebody pick up this torch and start doing this here in Connecticut. And he does it absolutely for free. Plus, it probably boosts his Instagram account too, showing all these photos. So this is the first edition of Some Good News Connecticut. I hope it brought some joy to you. I hope it's something that you wanna see again. Please comment down below. Give me a like, thumbs up, or subscribe. And I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. And I do apologize again for stealing John's intellectual property and copyright infringement. And uh, I'm probably gonna get a phone call from his lawyers from this, but you know what? I think everybody needs to be doing something like this and sharing the good news, especially during this pandemic. So thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there, and we'll see you in the next video.